You mentioned uh, the following line from the end of the Alan Turing paper, uh, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, that many people, like, like you said, many people know and very few have read, where, yeah. <laughs> where he proposes the Turing test. This is, this is how you know, because it's towards the end of the yeah. paper. Instead of trying to produce a program to simulate the adult mind, why not rather try to produce one which simulates the child's? So that's a really interesting point. If I think about the benchmarks we have before us, the, t the, the tests of our computer vision systems, they're often kind of trying to get to the adult. So what kind of benchmarks should we have? What kind of tests for computer vision do you think we should have that mimic the child's? in computer vision. Yeah, I think we should have those and we don't have those today. And I think uh, the part of the, the challenge is that we should really be collecting data of the type that a child, uh, that a child experiences, okay. right? So that gets into issues of, you know, privacy and so on and so forth. But there are attempts in this direction to sort, sort of try to collect the kind of data that a child encounters uh, growing up. So what's the child's linguistic environment? What's the child's visual environment? So if we could collect that kind of data and uh, then develop learning schemes based on that data, that would be one way to do it. Uh, I, I, I think that's a very promising direction myself. There might be people who would argue that we could just short circuit this in some way and uh, sometimes uh, we have imitated, uh, uh, we, we have not, we have had success by not imitating nature in detail. So if we, right. the usual example is airplanes, right? We don't build flapping wings. Uh, uh, flapping wings. So uh, yes, that's, a, that's one of the points of debate. Uh, in my mind, I, 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 would, I would bet on this this learning like a child approach. So one of the fundamental aspects of learning like a child is the interactivity. So the child gets to play with the data set it's learning from. Yes. So it gets to select. I mean, you can call that active learning. You can, you know, in, in the machine learning world, you can call it a lot of terms. What are your thoughts about this whole space of being able to play with the data set or select what you're learning? Yeah, so I think that uh, I I believe in that, and I think that uh, we could achieve it in in two ways, and I think we should use both. So one is uh, actually real robotics, right? So real, uh, you know, physical embodiments of agents who, who are interacting with the world, and they have a physical body with uh, dynamics and mass and moment of inertia and friction and all the rest. And you learn your body. The robot learns its body by doing a series of uh, actions. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is that uh, simulation environments. So uh, I think simulation environments are getting much, much better. In my, uh, in my life, in uh, Facebook AI research, our group has worked on something called Habitat, which is a, a simulation environment, uh, which is a visually photorealistic environment of, uh, you know, places like houses or interiors of various urban spaces and so forth. And as you move, you get a picture which is a pretty accurate picture. So uh, I I can now uh, you can imagine that subsequent generations of these simulators will be accurate not just visually but with respect to you know forces and masses and uh, haptic interactions and so on and uh, then then we have that environment to play with i think the uh, that uh, let me state one reason why i think this active being able to act in the world is important i think that this is one way to break the uh, correlation versus causation barrier so uh, th this is something which is of a, a great deal of interest these days. I mean, people like Judea Pearl have talked a lot about uh, uh, why, that uh, we are neglecting causality, and he describes the entire set of successes of deep learning as just curve fitting, right? Because it's uh, but 
I I don't quite agree. But, He's a troublemaker. Uh, he is. But yeah. uh, causality is important. But causality is not is not like a single silver bullet. It's not like one single principle. There are many different aspects here. And one of the ways in which uh, one of our most reliable ways of establishing causal links, and this is the way, for example, the the medical community does this is randomized control trials. So you have a, you you pick some situation, and now in some situation you perform an action, and for certain uh, others you don't, right? So uh, so you have a controlled experiment. Well, the child is in fact performing controlled experiments all the time, right? Right. Right. Okay. Small scale and yeah. <laughs> in a small scale, and but but that is a way that the child gets to build and refine its causal models of the world, and. Uh, my colleague Alison Gopnik has, uh, together with a couple of authors, co-authors, has this book called "The Scientist in the Crib," referring to the children. Mm -hmm. So, I like the part that I like about that is the scientist wants to do, wants to build causal models, mm -hmm. and the scientist does control experiments, and I think the child is doing that. So, to enable that, we will need to have these these, uh, these active experiments. And I think those could be done, some in the real world and some in simulation. So you have hope for simulation. I have hope it's, for it's simulation. A, that's an exciting possibility if we can get to not just photorealistic, but what's that called? Life realistic yeah. uh, simulation. So you don't see any fundamental blocks to why we can't eventually simulate the, the the principles of what it means to exist in the world as a physical no, I, agency. I, I don't see any fundamental problems there. I mean, and, and uh, look, look, the computer graphics community has come a long way. Right. So the in the early days, back going back to the eighties and nineties, they were uh, they were focusing on visual realism, right? And then they could do the easy stuff, but they couldn't do stuff like hair or fur and so on. Okay. Well, they managed to do that. Then they couldn't do physical. Uh, actions, right? Like there's a bowl of glass and it falls down and it shatters. Right. But then they could start to do pretty realistic models of that and so on and so forth. So the graphics people have shown that they can do this forward direction, not just for optical interactions, but also for physical interactions. So I think, uh, of course, some of that is very compute intensive, but I think by and by we will find ways of uh, making our models ever more realistic.